Okay, so in this video, let's take a look at one of these other properties of determinants and uh, elementary row operations, namely that if we apply the interchanging of two rows to matrix A um, to obtain matrix B, then the determinant of that resulting matrix B, which has had a couple of rows interchanged, is going to be minus one times the determinant of whatever the original matrix A was. So let's take a look at this, first looking at the two by two case. So if I have a matrix, we'll call this matrix A that we start with. And um, for two by two matrices, the determinant right would be AD minus BC. So the product of the diagonal entries minus the product of the off diagonal entries. And if we were to interchange those two rows, so I make AB the second row and the second row becomes the first row. So that is an interchanging of two rows, the only two rows in this matrix. This is now a new matrix B that we obtain by interchanging those rows. And now we can see that this determinant would be BC minus AD, which is exactly the opposite order of this difference as it was when we originally took the determinant of A. So from the two by two case, there's only two rows that we can interchange and we can see that when we do that interchange, that the determinant of this new matrix is exactly minus one times the determinant of the original matrix. We just flip flop the ordering of that difference. Let's next take a look at what happens when we go up one dimension to the n equals three case. So now I have some matrix A, we'll call this matrix A over here, which is a three by three matrix. And we can calculate the determinant of this matrix using a cofactor expansion across any row or down any column. Um, so here I've chosen the first row to work across to get the cofactor expansion. So I could write this determinant as A11 times cofactor 11 plus A12 times cofactor C12 uh, plus A13 times cofactor 13. Where, recall, these cofactors are based on these determinants over here. So C11, since 1 plus 1 is even, we have a positive sign in front of that, and then we would cross off the first row and the first column, and we would take the determinant of this resulting matrix. So this is what we call the 1-1 one, one cofactor. For 1-2, uh, recall here we would cross off the second column and the first row, so what's left over is A2-1, A3-3, A2-3, and A3-1. So that's where this uh, matrix comes from. The cofactor is the determinant of that matrix with a possible sign change if i plus j is odd, which it is in this case. And then over here we have C13, um, which we get when we cross off first row and third column, and we're left with this sub matrix. And here we do not have a negative sign because one plus three is even. Um, so these would be one way that we could calculate this determinant um, using these cofactors. And now let's consider what would happen if we did an interchange, say, with the first two rows. So here's matrix A. I'm going to interchange row one and row two of matrix A, and we'll wind up with some new matrix that will denote B. And if I want to calculate the determinant of this matrix, I can now use a cofactor expansion across the second row of this new matrix. And if I do that, then what we'll see is the coefficient here is still a11, but because this is located now in the 2, 1 position of matrix B, this is 2 plus 1 is odd. So here we would have a negative sign in front of this determinant, so I need to multiply the original cofactor 1, 1 by negative sign to account for the fact that now we're in row 2, column 1. So this should be odd. And each of these cofactors now is going to have a different sign from when we calculated the determinant of matrix A. So here I would get A12 times positive determinant of this. So that means I need to multiply C12 by minus 1. And we have the same correction that we would need to make for C13. So what we can see here is we have an extra negative sign that we can pull out from all of these terms. So the determinant of this matrix B 
would be exactly minus one times the determinant of the matrix A that we started with. And before we take a look at a different interchange, I wanna point out that when we interchange the first two rows of this matrix, the submatrices are the same. So in each of these cofactors, the submatrix is the same. Um, when I take out this row and this row, excuse me, and this column, we're left with A22, A23, A32, A33. But the issue is um, we've changed the cofactor expansion now to the second row, so that affected the signs. We'll see that next if we instead were to interchange, say, the first row of A with the third row of A, we'll get a similar result with slightly different reasoning. And so, for example, here we have interchanged rows 1 and 3 of this matrix A. And now I'm going to do cofactor expansion to get a similar result as what we had for the determinant of matrix A across what is now the third row of this new matrix. We can call this matrix over here matrix C, for example. So um, the sign that we have in front of each of the determinants of the submatrices are going to be the same in row three as they are in row one. This would have an even one because this is in the three one position of matrix C. That this cofactor is going to have a leading negative sign. This cofactor does not have a negative sign. So that's not going to be the issue. But what is going to change is that the actual sub matrices are going to be different. So if I were to take a look at the sub matrix that I get when I cross off the first column and the third row, Notice I get uh, A32, A33 in the top row of this submatrix, and A22, A23 is the second row. So it is the exact opposite ordering of the rows as we had over here. And so now we can use the result that we had for n equals 2. I know that the determinant of this matrix is going to be exactly the opposite sign as the determinant of this matrix because we've already proven this for two by two matrices. And that's gonna be a similar story for each of the other cofactors. So now we need to adjust the sign of the cofactors, not because of the positioning of each of these entries in the matrix, but because the sub matrices in each of these cofactors has a row interchange from the cofactors that we first had over here. So in the end, we are gonna get a determinant for this matrix C that I had down here, which has the exact opposite sign as the determinant of matrix A. Um, and you can make a similar argument. What we haven't considered is what happens if we were to interchange rows two and three. Um, and you can verify very similarly that that is also going to change the sign of the determinant. So um, what we've shown here is that when we interchange two rows of a two by two matrix or a three by three matrix, then that has the effect of changing the sign of the determinant. And if you wanted to prove this for n equals four, n equals five, um, this is very much an inductive proof for those that have um, taken a proof writing class. And that is I can next go up to the n equals four case and proving the n equals four case is gonna require what we've already shown which is namely that when we interchange rows of a three by three matrix, that changes the sign of the determinant. Um, so from here, you could probably go up to, let's assume this is true for n equals k, and then we're gonna show that it has to be true for n equals k plus one. But here we've done the first couple of cases, so hopefully you get a feel for what that general proof would look like. Um, and on the next slide, next video, we're going to take a similar look at what happens when we do a row replacement operation.